In this video, we are going to look at a concept called formal charges. And that is not an ionic charge or an oxidation state, but kind of a made up number that is used when we're trying to decide between two or more valid dot structures. Ideally, the goal is for the formal charge on each atom to be zero. And that means that it stays in the environment that it's in as a single atom. And the formal charge, how we're going to calculate that for each atom, is we're going to take that atom's valence electrons and subtract from that number the assigned electrons. And I put that number in a box. I just draw a box around each atom in the molecule. And the assigned electrons would be all the lone pairs on any one atom, and then half of the bonding electrons. So this works uh, assuming that all the electrons are shared equally. And again, it's not an actual charge. It's simply used to decide between two or more valid dot structures. So I'm going to jump ahead to, oh, sorry about that. I'm going to jump ahead to two possible dot structures for, well, I think what I'm going to do first is actually show us the valence electrons on the atoms. So if, if we look just at hydrogen, the atom hydrogen, I really shouldn't put that in a box, but that has one valence electron. It's in column one. And we skip the metals and go over here. Boron, we don't really care about either. If we look at group four, that's carbon. So if we draw carbon's four valence electrons around it like that, then we see that carbon needs uh, four more electrons to be happy. So 99% of the time, carbon likes uh, four lines to it. So that's its valence picture. It's got four electrons already, so it needs to share four more. If we, oh, that's supposed to say four. Oh, that's a line, whoops. Group four, so. Group five, if we look at nitrogen, nitrogen has five valence electrons. So most of the time, nitrogen is going to have a lone pair on it when it's in a molecule, and nitrogen likes to have three lines to it. So these are the valence electrons that we're looking at. Group six is oxygen and sulfur. So if we put the six electrons around it like this, then oxygen only needs two more electrons to share in order to have the octet. So oxygen likes to have three lines, or two lines to it, likes three lines. And group seven, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Each one of those atoms only lacks one electron from having eight. So most of the time, we're going to see the halogen column with one line, likes one line. So when I talk about an atom likes to retain its atomic identity, that means the atom, when it's in a molecule, still likes to be in that picture. Now, if I draw two valid structures for difluoromethane, I don't want to go through the whole entire process for that, but CH4, oops, CH2F2. If we did a dot structure for this, the needed available shared method, we would come up with four lines and carbon in the middle with up to four atoms around it. There's fluorine, the fluorines are here. And then to calculate the formal charge, we definitely need to put all the lone pairs on all the atoms. So each fluorine would have two lone pairs and this would be four electrons from carbon plus two electrons from each hydrogen plus 14 electrons from the two fluorines so that gives us 20 electrons total, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. It's 
also possible, let me make that stop focusing itself, it's also possible to draw another dot structure that's valid, meaning we use all of the electrons available and everybody's happy. So if we put carbon in the middle and then connect a fluorine on either side of carbon and then a hydrogen, which has to hang off the end, then we've still got four lines and if we put lone pairs on everything that does not yet have eight electrons, we'll also end up using all 20 electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and hydrogen's happy with two electrons and everything else has eight. So if we were to just look at these two structures and say which one is best, we might choose this one because we say, well, it looks better. So what we're going to do is calculate a formal charge on each atom. If we look at this structure here and we go ahead and separate the line with the pair of electrons that it really represents, then we can assign electrons to each atom. So we could do the same thing over here. And I'm going to calculate the formal charge on each atom in this long stringy structure. And I do that simply by drawing a box around each atom. So the assigned electrons are those electrons that are inside of the box. So what we're doing for the assigned electrons, if we look above or look in your textbook, all lone pairs and half of the bonding electrons are going to be assigned to each atom. So these two lone pairs on fluorine and then one half of each bond. So to me it's easier to just separate each atom and make sure all electrons are accounted for. So the formal charge, that's what we're going to do here, calculate the formal charge on each atom. We'll really only have to do that for three atoms since these are in the same environment. So if we look at carbon, remember the formal charge is the valence electrons minus the assigned, and that's what I have put in the box. So for the valence electrons, we have to look at the periodic table. And I've redrawn the periodic table up here. I kind of made a mess of that. But carbon's in group four, nitrogen five, oxygen six, and fluorine seven. So four, five, six, and seven, the group number is where I got the valence electrons, and hydrogen is in group one. Hydrogen has one valence electron. So the formal charge on hydrogen equals zero. That's always got to be the case, because hydrogen can only have a single bond to it. So here its formal charge is zero. If we look at the formal charge on the fluorine, Fluorine has seven valence electrons. We get that number from the periodic table. And then we subtract the assigned electrons from it. So two, four, five, six. So we come up with a plus one for the fluorine. So I'm just going to put that up here in the box. Fluorine definitely does not want to be a plus one. Uh, but that's what its formal charge would be. So this fluorine is in the same environment, so it would also be a plus one, and the hydrogen would always be zero, because it's got to be zero. If we look at the formal charge on carbon, let me draw that one over here. The formal charge, carbon has four valence electrons around it. That comes from the periodic table. Four valence electrons minus. It's also got six electrons assigned to it in this particular structure. So that would give us a formal charge of minus two on the carbon. So I place the assigned electrons in a box. Oh, minus two. So the formal charges need to add up to the overall charge on the molecule, which is zero. But the fact that these charges are not zero, means this is really not good. Okay. 
So you would say, well, that structure is not very likely to be the correct structure because those formal charges are not zero. Now if we go back and look at this structure here, if we put the assigned electrons in a box, just like we did before, making sure that we split the bonding electrons between the two atoms. And now if we assign a formal charge to fluorine, fluorine has seven valence electrons. That number again comes from the periodic table. Minus the assigned electrons that are in the box, two, four, six, seven, then that gives us a formal charge of zero. So that's good. We don't want atoms to have a formal charge. We can do the same thing with carbon. So the formal charge on carbon, four valence electrons. That number comes again from the periodic table. So we look at carbon. Carbon has four valence electrons. We subtract from it the electrons that are assigned to it. Again, half of the bonding electrons and all the lone pairs, which there aren't any on this carbon. And then the formal charge on hydrogen always has to be one because hydrogen only has one valence electron and it can only have two electrons maximum. So it's always going to be sharing one pair of elect, well, sharing an electron uh, with another atom for a bond. So here, this is the best structure. since the formal charges are all zero. Since formal charges are, I'm going to say, minimal. In this case, zero is ideal. So the formal charge concept is probably not really, really important for the entire section that we're going to be looking at. Again, it is just a way to determine which structure out of two possible structures is the best one.